Application, Marginal Analysis in Economics. One key idea in economics is that how much decisions are made at the margin. And to an economist, marginal just refers to the rate of change, i.e. a derivative. To, to a mathematician, the rate of change is a derivative or a slope. To an economist, the rate of change is marginal. So for example, if total cost depends on quantity, then marginal cost, Tc prime q, tells us how total cost changes when quantity changes. And if total revenue depends on quantity, then marginal revenue, Tr prime q, tells us how total revenue changes when quantity changes. Marginal analysis is the comparison or the study of the marginal benefits, Mb, to the marginal costs, Mc, of an additional unit of an activity. It asks the question, is it worth it to keep continuing on in an activity? For example, what is my marginal benefit and marginal cost of sleeping another hour? Or what is my marginal benefit and marginal cost of adding on another feature to a car? What's society's marginal benefit and marginal cost of the government funding another dollar in education? And what we'll focus on is, what is the firm's marginal benefit and marginal cost of increasing production or output? And the optimal how much decision occurs when the marginal benefit of engaging in an activity is equal to its marginal cost, generally, or MB equals MC. So we use marginal analysis to analyze the firm's production or output decision, which asks, at what level of output is profit at its highest? And there are really four ways to answer this question. The first is to graph total revenue and total cost and find the value of output at which they are furthest apart. That's because the difference between total revenue and total cost is profit. Or we could just graph profit and find the value of output at which profit is at its highest. We can set the marginal benefit of output equal to its marginal cost and solve for output. Or we can maximize the profit function with respect to output. So when we're given demand functions, total revenue, and total cost functions, all of these four ways will yield the same exact profit maximizing output level. What our focus on is on right now is to set the marginal benefit of output equal to its marginal cost and solve for that maximizing, uh, that profit maximizing level of output or the optimal output. Next, we'll see how we can maximize the profit function with respect to output. Again, either one of these, you're gonna yield the same exact optimal output level. So let's take a look at the firm's production decision using marginal analysis with some general functions. So let's use the following notation. P is going to be price, Q is quantity. Demand is Q of P. Total revenue by definition is equal to price times quantity. Total cost will be defined as TC of Q. And then profit is defined as the difference between total revenue and total cost. So let's think about the optimal production level or output level for a firm using marginal analysis. The additional benefit, the marginal benefit, that a firm receives from increasing output is the additional revenue received. Thus, the marginal benefit of production for a firm is the derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity, which is just marginal revenue. The additional cost that a firm incurs from increasing output is that additional production cost incurred. Marginal cost is simply the derivative of total cost with respect to quantity. The optimal production decision for any firm occurs where marginal benefit of production equals its marginal cost, or mathematically, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So we're going to have two functions. We're going to have a marginal revenue function that depends on Q. We're going to have a marginal cost function that depends on Q. We can set them equal together. And we can solve for this Q star, this optimal quantity. What you'll find is that at this point, at this quantity, profit for the firm is at its highest. So a question to ask is, what if the marginal revenue doesn't equal marginal cost? So let's think about it very quickly. For output levels such that marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, 
the firm should increase production to increase profit. What this means when marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost is that the firm could increase output by just a little bit more. And the additional revenue it receives is greater than the cost incurred. So they should, it's worth it to increase output. Now, for output levels such that marginal revenue is less than marginal cost, the firm should decrease production to increase profit. Let's go through a practice problem. Okay, so let's go through an example. Let's take a look at the firm's uh, production decision using marginal analysis. So we're given the following information. P is price, Q is quantity, the demand curve is 600 minus 1 half P. Total revenue is defined as always as price times quantity. Total cost is given to us as 20 plus Q squared. And profit is defined as always as total revenue minus total cost. So what we want to do is use marginal analysis to answer the following questions. What is the optimal quantity the firm should produce at? Call it Q star. Then, what is the price that will prevail at this quantity? Call it P star. Finally, what is the profit that the firm will earn at this quantity? Call it Pi star. Pi indicates profit when we're talking about firm production decisions. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to graph a lot of this stuff out too just to complement our analysis. Okay, so we're asked to use marginal analysis to solve um, the firm's optimal production decision. So we're going to answer these questions. What's Q star? What's P star? And what's profit star? Um, and we're given this information about the demand structure and about the total cost structure. So what do we want to do? What is the optimal quantity the firm should produce at? Call it Q star. So first I just want to answer these questions without actually graphing anything. So let's go through this. That was a bunch of books falling, if you heard that. Um, so let's go through part one. So what is the optimal quantity the firm should produce at? So we know that Q star occurs where the marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Okay, so we need to find what marginal revenue are, and we need to find out what marginal costs are. So the first thing we need to do is calculate total revenue. We're not told what total revenue is, specifically. All we know that total revenue is price times quantity. So I need to get my demand function into price is a function of quantity. I need to find the inverse demand function, and that's going to be 1,200 minus 2Q. So there's my price as a function of quantity. I'm going to multiply that by Q. If I were to um, make this in long form, I would get 1200Q minus 2Q squared for total revenue, which tells me that my marginal revenue is going to be the derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity. So I'm going to use my power rules and my difference rules, and I'm going to get that marginal revenue is equal to 1200 minus 4Q. We can do the same thing with marginal cost. So marginal cost is going to equal the derivative of total cost with respect to quantity. I'm told what the total cost function is. It's 20 plus Q squared. So marginal cost is just 2Q. So I've got my two functions here. I'm going to call them A. I'm going to call them B. And what we're trying to do is set these guys equal to each other and solve for that variable Q. So I've got 1,200 minus 4Q is equal to 2Q. So remember, marginal analysis, all we're trying to do, let's make this green, all we're trying to do is set marginal, rev oh, marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. That's all that we're doing right here. Okay, so I can solve this out for Q, and I get Q star is equal to 200. That's a Q star that I should get. So then I'm asked, to calculate the price at this quantity. So if I want to know what the price is at this quantity, I've got to look at the demand curve, or the inverse demand curve, this 1200 minus 2Q. Now let me go ahead and write that up here too. So this is the regular demand curve. We can write it as an inverse demand curve, which is just 1200 minus 2Q. All right, so the price that's going to, be, that's going to prevail in this market is going to be P star 
and we can put a Q star if you want, is going to be 1200 minus 2 times this Q star, which is 200, which yields P star equal to 800. And then our profit, let's call it pi star, you can find it one of two ways. You could have specified a profit function, which is total revenue minus total cost, or you can just calculate total revenue first and then subtract total cost from it. What you should up what you should end up getting is that you get 160,000 for total revenue, and you can subtract the total costs, which is 40,020. So you end up getting some weird number, that's okay. It's a number. 119,900 and 80 for profit. So this was that total revenue minus total cost. Okay, so what I wanted to show you, just on this side, I'm not going to be very particular about the horizontal intercepts and things like that, but I want to show you what you're doing here. So what I'm going to do graphically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph three things. I'm going to graph um, total revenue and total cost. I'm going to graph the associated profit function, then I'm going to graph the associated marginal revenue, marginal cost curves, and demand, and demand. Okay, so, or maybe we should put P there. All right, so this is what's generally going to happen no matter what function you're given. So this doesn't necessarily correspond uh, specifically with these functions, but you'll get the idea. So when I graph total revenue, what's going to happen is this is a quadratic function, right? This is a parabola. It goes through the horizontal, uh, it goes through the origin, and it's upside down U. This makes sense. So when the firm produces absolutely nothing, they don't earn any revenue. So it's gonna look maybe something just like just like this. And this is gonna be very typical. Your total cost function is gonna look either like a cubic function, it can be linear, or it can look sort of like a check mark. It all depends on the type of function given. In our case, we got this total cost function that is quadratic again. And notice that the vertical intercept is 20. What that means is that at quantity equals zero, this firm still incurs some cost. And I'm going to make it a point to put this up here. Just to show you. Oh, okay. So this is sort of what total cost looks like. All right, we could put total revenue of Q and total cost of Q. So the difference between total revenue and total cost is profit. So look at this. When I'm going to graph profit, here's something you can do. I know that when total revenue equals total cost, that by definition, profit is zero. So this is a break-even point. This is like a break-even point right here. I'm just going to carry this down. So I know this is going to be my profit function. So for levels of quantity that are less than this break-even point, Profit is negative, and that's okay. That happens with firms sometimes. And then here's this other break-even point. So in this case, we're going to have two break-even points. Maybe this is just about here. What you'll notice is that the profit function is also going to have this upside-down U shape. Let's try to graph this out. I'm just going to... supposed to be this... Oh, all right. I'm going to redo that. Let's just try to redo that. It's going to look... You know, so, something like this, something like this. So here's profit Q. Okay, so what we're doing with marginal analysis is we're trying to find the top of this peak. And you'll learn later how to find this without using marginal analysis, but this is what we're doing. We're trying to find the level of output such that pro uh, profit is at its highest. So let's write this over here. At this point, at this level of Q star, profit is at its highest. And what I'm going to show you is that marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Okay? So I'm just going to carry this down for now. Because this is what's going to happen every time you graph a profit function and every time you graph the associated marginal revenue, marginal curves, marginal cost curves. So if I were to graph marginal revenue, look at this. It's 1,200 minus 4Q. So I'm going to put this guy here. Here's my 1,200. And, oh, wow. 
Oh, whoops. Sorry. This is supposed to be a straight line. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Here's my marginal revenue. And this intercept here is, is 300. Okay, I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to graph this demand curve. This demand curve also has an intercept of 1,200. And it has a horizontal intercept of 600. Okay. Oh, what's happening? So this is going to keep continuing out over here. So it's going to it's going to continue out over there. So our marginal cost function is 2q. So it happens to actually be linear. That's totally fine. Sometimes you get a marginal cost curve that is checkmark shaped. A lot of times in your intro courses you get marginal costs that are linear like this. So this marginal cost actually looks like this. Oop. There we go. Marginal cost so what you found using math without using any graph is this level here where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Okay, you found this quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, which corresponds to the highest profit. And also, you might not be able to tell on this graph because it was just sketched and it's not really based on any particular function. This is going to be the level of profit. Let's put this over here. Biggest difference between total revenue and total cost. So all of this will line up when we actually have equations and actually really sketch things out properly. So anyway, you found this Q star. And then if you want to find the price level associated with this Q star, you just use the demand curve. You just find that, that uh, pair, that ordered pair. So this actually ends up being your P star. So in our case, this is sort of what our graphs look like. In our case, this Q star is equal to 200. The P star is equal to 800. And our max profit is equal to 119,980. Um, and yeah, that's good. I don't want to mess this up too much. But let me just, just to finish things off, let me go ahead and erase this just for a second. And at this quantity, total cost is 40,020. And total revenue is equal to 160,000. So on my graph, I just want you to make note that on my graph, it looks like the um, highest profit or also corresponds to the highest total revenue point and that typically does not happen so I apologize that just ended up happening like this but I hope that you get the point that the optimal quantity occurs where profit is maximized where the difference between total revenue and total cost is the highest and where marginal revenue equals marginal cost